nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So, let's talk about something where we, which we barely have mentioned in the previous lectures, hole transport. So holes are just like electrons, right? It's very simple. So Nemo 1D hole transport. So let me give you first a different perspective on holes. Let's start with electrons. So here I'm plotting a resonant tunneling diode, a gallium arsenide one, I, and actually it's, it's a hypothetical RTD. Let me pull that back where I chose a certain effective mass in this material here and I'm showing a density of states that shows clearly when there is a high density of states in the resonant tunneling diode, I have a very nice um, transmission coefficient like this and they're associated with each other, right? So we all understand that now. Now if, you, if I make my effective mass a little smaller, I basically can pack more states in my particle in the box, right? My, my states are separated at smaller energy differences. So that means I'm starting to pack them in tighter and if the effective mass is lower, they get down lower in energy and if the effective mass of the barrier is also heavier, that means the barrier is less transparent, so these transmission coefficients are much sharper. Okay, so here they dip down in orders of magnitude by say five orders of magnitude in the transmission coefficient. Here they go down by 10, 11 orders of magnitude, right? So that kind of gives you an idea of how sharp these re resonances are if you have heavy masses. Okay, so the heavier the mass, the more states you pack in, and the less they're going to be coupled through this tunneling diode. And these sharp speaks uh, are going to be harder to find numerically. Okay, so you got to work harder on finding those peaks because you want to integrate them, right? Talk about needle in a haystack, right? You're going down 11 orders of magnitude. If you just sort of throw sprinkles at that, at that energy range here, you're never going to catch it. But you got to catch it because if there is a current in there. All right, so now the way to look at this, that holes are just electrons upside down, right? So, so you do that, you turn that whole thing upside down. And then you call that light holes and you call this heavy holes. Right? And there is a, a barrier material here and electron uh, holes would like to be on top of the valence band, right? So they're going to aggregate here. And uh, if you have a light hole band, you have resonant states that have a certain separation and if you have heavy hole states, they have a separation that's slightly different. Right? Holes seem to be electrons upside down. There's a little problem with that view that heavy holes and light holes are in the same band and they actually talk to each other. They're not decoupled bands. So how do you deal with that? Um, so light holes, heavy holes are coupled. Also, you will see that these bands are non-parabolic. So you have a very anisotropic dispersion of these holes. So if you've done any work in that, these words make sense. They may, may not make much sense to you yet. <coughs> so what that results in, it's, it's a very unintuitive, tra unintuitive transport behavior. So actually holes are going to be very different than electrons. They have even more complications than what we've seen in the previous lectures than electrons. So if you just say, okay, I'm going to consider a light hole band, a heavy hole band, and a split off band that are completely decoupled. You can, now you're well equipped with these lecture series to actually understand that there's three transmission coefficients that are going to be having resonance at, at different energies that are going to be at different uh, depths. 
in terms of uh, a sharpness of resonances, but you should also start to know what these bands are coupled, and if you did a tight binding calculation in SP3S star, where these bands are naturally coupled, right? it's not like you can separate them out. In an SP3S star model, heavy light hole and split off band are automatically included. On the right, I've done what I would call a multiple single band calculation, right? I've constructed a single band Hamiltonian for light holes, computed the thing, single band Hamiltonian for the heavy holes and the split off bands. So if you have a tight binding Hamiltonian that has roughly the same effective masses as what you expect to have here and what was chosen in these uh, calculations, you sort of see a resemblance of this transmission coefficient with some of the features that we would expect. Okay, so the light holes have a very sharp, uh, sorry, a, a broader resonance. Okay, so we identify something like at light holes. And the ground states are roughly at the same energy. And then there's these very sharp needles that are sort of sitting there. Those are heavy hole states. So you can say, okay, there's a heavy hole one state, heavy hole two state, heavy hole three state but they start to be at slightly different energies than what you effective mass model would have predicted. And then you start to see the split off bands also coming in downneath and, and you sort of see also if you look really carefully that these bands have not only dip, uh, rises, they also have dips. There's something about that. Now if you looked at a density of states, um, of this multiband calculation, you can get a little bit more insight as to what these resonance states are. So again, here's the band edge diagram, and dark means high density of states, light means low density of states, dark means electrons, uh, holes can sit there, white means there is no holes. So you see there is a S-like ground state sitting very low, or I guess very high in the valence band. Okay, that's a heavy hole one state. And then you see a broader state that's also penetrating deeper into the barriers here. That's the light hole one state. Shortly above, uh, below it, you see a, another state that is split, has two lobes, doesn't penetrate into the barriers much, transmission coefficient very sharp, heavy hole two state. And then you march further down, heavy hole three state, and then there is a broad light hole two state, two lobes penetrating deep into the barriers, and then four, then a light hole three, very broad. You, go, you also see as deeper as you go into the valence band, it kind of gets darker and darker, right? So these resonances get broader and broader. Okay? All right. So this is what a tight binding calculation gives, and it can ident you can identify these light hole and heavy hole and split off uh, bands relatively easily. 